Today we're going to be talking about the heroes you need to be focusing on Angel Legion. Angel Legion is an idle RPG similar to Idle Heroes and we've noticed a ton of new players joining the community. So it only makes sense to go ahead and make a video talking about the different strategies available to you in this game and how to get the most progress using the fewest number of heroes. And before we do that, let me remind you today's video is sponsored by Angel Legion. And actually, you can go into the description of today's video and find some codes and a web page where you can enter your account information and those codes to get yourself some free rewards. So make sure you go ahead and do that after you've set up your Angel Legion account. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the heroes you should be building. The first hero we have is Maya, or Mysterious Girl. She is compulsory for all teams. But what's cool about her is you can fully customize not just the way she looks, like every hero in this game, but the weapon she uses. If you go to her artifact, there are three for you to choose from. There is the Unique Scythe, there is the Blitz Sniper, and there is the Hero Katana. Each of these offer their own unique bonuses to Maya's abilities, which you can go ahead and read at your leisure. But the main thing is it will change where you position Maya on the lineup. For the Scythe, you need to put her on the front line and she will buff frontline heroes. With the Katana, you need to put her on either the front or the back line and the hero either in front or behind her will then get bonuses. And if you're using the Blitz Sniper, you can go ahead and benefit by putting her on the back line and she will buff back line heroes. Now it's important to to understand that your team is split up into two rows, three on the front line, three on the back line. And heroes on the front line will always be the priority targets for your enemy's attacks, and you will always attack heroes in the same column as you, unless said otherwise. So your heroes in column one will attack the enemies in column one, your heroes in column two will attack the enemies in column two, and your heroes in column three will attack the enemies in column three. So by running yourself with a sniper rifle like I do, you're not buffing your frontline heroes, which means they're weaker, and as they will be the priority to get hit, that's also something to think about because they will have less HP. That leads many to conclude the Blitz Sniper is the weakest of the weapons in this game, and that is a fair argument. However, getting hit in general by your opponents is a bad thing, and that's something you want to mitigate. So how do we do that? Well, it's not just by brute forcing things with damage, it's by using crowd control. And heroes that exist in this game called combo heroes will synergize with the three various weapons we have and allow us to do just that. Many people assume when building heroes they should prioritize heroes that increase their damage or provide a lot of damage for their team. But as I said, crowd control is a much more useful thing to do. Crowd control is stunning, sleeping, silencing, pretty much anything you can do to your opponent to reduce their effectiveness and even potentially stop them from attacking at all. And Maya allows our heroes to do just that. So when choosing your weapon, you need to also focus on heroes that allow you to crowd control. And that is going to be the discussion of today's video. So we'll start off with the most popular of the artifacts, the Hero Katana, because the Hero Katana allows you to use one of the most powerful control heroes in the game. Her name, Deadly Shadow. Deadly Shadow, or Miwa Suzuki, has some fantastic abilities, mainly the ability to crowd control with her active skill. You can see here, when she is used with Hero Katana, which is the weapon you should be using with Maya alongside a Deadly Shadow, she will not just deal physical damage to the enemies on the front row, but actually improve her critical hit chance by 40%. Now that's important, because as you can see with her final ability, when she scores a critical hit, she will stun enemies for one round. So that added crit chance from the active is really, really helpful. 40% is definitely significant. And you can add to that even more by improving your crit damage with her ability. So she's a massive damage dealer as well. So the most important thing to do with a Deadly Shadow is get that critical hit. And by running Maya with a Katana, you can do just that. And that critical hit is what lets you stun. If you fail to crit, you don't stun, and that's really bad. So if you do want to get some really good crowd control, Deadly Shadow is the hero for you if you're using the katana. Make sure to find other ways to improve her crit as well, and this is typically found in the Nightmare armor, as that will buff crit. There's also the Eternal Knight armor as well, which is an upgraded version of it. But basically, if you're running either the Nightmare armor or the Eternal Knight armor, as a bonus for wearing the pieces, you will gain increased critical hit chances. And that is really important. 
Now, for those of you that want to use the unique scythe, you have some other good options for crowd control. The main one being Time Guardian. Now, Time Guardian has one of the best crowd control abilities in the game, if not the best crowd control ability. You can see from her active skill that if you use her with the unique scythe, there's a 40% chance to stun your opponents on the front row. It doesn't even need to be a critical strike. However, even if she doesn't have the unique scythe with her, there's still a 30% chance. You're only gaining a 10% increase. But also, if you look at her improved skill at the end, you can see that Deep Fear gives her an additional 20% chance to stun. That's really, really helpful. And combine that with this ability right here, it says that if you deal a critical hit, the stun chance is increased by 40. So you can take that 40% for critting, combine that with the improved skill here that's 20, so that's 60% chance to stun, and then add to that the improved active by using the unique scythe, and that becomes a 100% chance to stun if you crit, but if you don't crit, it's still a 60% chance to stun. So that is more consistent than Deadly Shadows crit. Now, some people, even if they're not using the unique scythe, choose to use Time Guardian, because even though you're not using scythe, you still get a 30% chance to stun the opponent. That means it's a 90% chance to stun them, and it's still a 50% chance if you don't crit. That's still pretty good. So against opponents that have a lot of crit resistance, Time Guardian can be super duper useful. But she would definitely be one of my main focuses if I was building a team using the scythe. And finally, there's the Blitz Sniper. And the Blitz Sniper has a few good heroes who can crowd control your opponents and lock down the win for you. Now, this is also the weapon that I use as my primary weapon on my account, so my account should give you a lot of information about that anyway. Now, Time Jumper for me is a personal favorite. I think Time Jumper is absolutely incredible. Her active skill is able to deal a load of damage to opponents and has a 30% chance to stun them if you're using the Blitz Sniper. On top of that, if she hits a stunned opponent, she actually increases her critical strike chance to 100%, and her other ability also strengthens her crit damage. So like Deadly Shadow, she's dealing a lot of damage on critical hits. Now, the main thing about Time Jumper, though, is she only has a 30% chance to stun opponents, so you'll need to find other ways to stun them, and that chance only exists if you're using the Blitz Sniper. If you're not, the chance isn't even there. So if you are using the Blitz Sniper, you actually do need to lean on heroes like Time Guardian, who can just naturally stun anyway, whether you're using the Scythe or not. And you might want to also think about Dark Shooter. Dark Shooter is incredible because her active skill has a 100% chance to stun the opponent it hits, which is amazing. And that just means you just need to hit them. That's so good. And it cannot be resisted. What a great thing about this. So you'll find a lot of opponents you're fighting in maybe PvP or even like PvE game modes. There's just someone you have to stop. And if you do not crowd control them, you're going to get screwed. Well, that's where Dark Shooter really comes in. If you run something like the Master Gear to improve her chance to hit so you don't get dodged, that's really helpful. And then if you just do land a hit on them, you're guaranteed to stun that opponent. So as long as you're faster than that opponent, you can lock them down with Dark Shooter. You can also energy feed that Dark Shooter so she keeps doing active skills over and over again. And that's a reliable way to shut down at least one problem hero you're fighting. Now, the reason crowd control is so good is in the battlefield, we have opposing teams that contain just a row of three opponents. There's no front line or back line. So as long as your heroes are coming out there and dealing controlling effects to your opponent, you're actually going to be in a really, really good position. Take a look at my Time Guardian here. She's got a triple stun on that opposing team, which means they can't do anything this next round. And that's also guaranteed a crit there for Time Jumper. So now I'm just guaranteed to CC them, lock them down, and I'm in a really good position for future rounds. Now, unfortunately, they've broken free from their stun, so they may go ahead and attack me here. Ares is going to come out. Gods are also really strong. Ares is super good because he can execute opponents when they're below a certain threshold of HP. There, Dark Shooter came out, got a stun on that opponent, which prevented them from being a pain. Here comes Time Guardian, getting a triple stun again. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to be in this fight now until the end. The opponent's health is way down. My opponents are now going to skip a turn because of crowd control. And you saw how much damage they were able to do. But because I'm locking them down with CC, I'm just in a really good position. Dark Shooter comes out again, guarantees another stun. The reason she keeps getting active skills is she's being energy fed by my Raging Angel, who did just die there. There's Time Guardian again. Didn't unfortunately get the stun here. Maybe Time Jumper can get another one. She didn't, but it doesn't matter because in comes Ares and I'm going to go ahead and get myself the Execute. Either way, that fight was won because of crowd control. And that's the most important thing you need to be focusing on when building your team.
Now, another point for people that want to use the rifle is there's actually another crowd control hero as well, and it's called Butterfly Girl or Hannah. She's able to steal energy from opponents, and that can be really useful because active skills are the thing that are going to kill you. Now, it doesn't stop them from attacking, but active skills really are where all the damage and abilities on opponents in this game comes from. Basic attacks are significantly less problematic, and I think that's true for many games like this, such as Idle Heroes. Now, the great thing about Hannah is she's able to reduce an opponent's energy significantly. She's got a 50% chance to steal three points of it if you're using her with the Blitz Sniper. On top of that, the energy reduction, there's a chance to steal just one point of energy on a normal attack, which is really nice. So basic attacks steal energy too. And actually you can read here, if she does a critical hit, there's an increased chance to reduce their energy by 50%. So if you score a critical strike with Hannah, that 50% adds to the 50% we already have here from using the Blitz Sniper, which takes us to a whopping 100% chance if we crit to reduce the enemy's energy by three points. And that's such a big jump by using the Blitz Sniper, because if you don't use the Blitz Sniper, it's a 35% chance to reduce them by two. So you, I suppose you could use her on any lineup and still just rely on critting and have an 85% chance to reduce by two, but a 100% chance to reduce by three is just so much better. So hopefully you've learned something today about using the different weapons in this, and maybe if you're using a scythe, you know that you should be going for someone like Time Guardian, and you know as well if you're looking to go with the rifle, there's lots of different heroes to choose from for crowd control, and as well if you're looking to use the katana, Deadly Shadow is the hero for you. And one final point I will make is if you're using the scythe, a lot of your power will Will actually just come from raw damage. Heroes like Valkyrie are really powerful at dishing out damage and can actually attack your opponents many times, which is absolutely terrifying. And as well with the Scythe, you have one of the best damage dealers in the game, Mulan or Filial Spirit. She's also really, really incredible, and she's worth considering too if you want to be a Scythe main. In fact, one of the most powerful Scythe users in the entire game is on my server right now, thanks to a server merge, Avrilla, and Avrilla's lineup contains all these. You've got Time Guardian for the stun, you've got Filial Spirit right there for massive damage, and as well, they're using one of the best Scythe heroes in the game, Arcane Scholar, and she's able to energy feed, which is really, really cool. On top of that, you'll see heroes like Phantom Blade making their way in, and Phantom Blade, if you're in manual mode, actually does a ton of damage just with basic attacks, and joins in with your other heroes' basic attacks. So yeah, Phantom Blade's another one to consider if you want something strong, but Phantom Blade works on all teams, so that's not unique to the artifact you pick, because you'll never do an active skill, and if you never do an active skill, it doesn't matter what weapon your Maya is holding. Anyway, if you found this useful, let me know in the comments section, and hopefully now you can jump into Angel Legion and know just the heroes you want to be building to put together your full team. There are plenty more guides out here, and I've got a whole Let's Play series of me making progress on my account, so go ahead and check that out too, and hopefully you find this game something fun for you to do in your spare time. Either way, guys, thanks for tuning in, have a fantastic week, and of course, happy eye.